Hi, hi everybody. Okay, uh, thanks for joining in. Okay, let's see. Okay, so um, compared to our previous webinar where there's uh, two or three of us, so tonight there's only me to share with you guys uh, some tips on creative uh, photograph, how to take creative photos for everybody. So anyway, uh, uh, just a quick one. Um, for those of you who has saw some of our earlier messages, uh, we will have a uh, three uh, one hundred dollar Fuji film voucher to be given to three lucky winners. So um, in the midst of my live streaming, there will be a. Uh, uh, I will tell you guys what is the keyword, what is the hashtag to put in the comment section. So after that, when you post in the comment section, um, at the back end, we will choose the winner for the vouchers. So what we need is just for you guys to type in the comment section, the keyword. And uh, after that, um, we will send out the, we will, we will con after that, at the end of the streaming, end of the streaming, um, uh, Fuji Film will announce the three lucky winners and what we need is just for the three lucky winners to acknowledge in the comment section. Yeah, so um, so you have to stay until end of the end of the streaming lah, just to uh, listen to me. <laughs> so yeah, so if we don't hear, if we don't see any acknowledgement after 30 seconds, right, uh, then we have to pick the next winner. Okay, so after that, Fuji Film will contact you guys. Um, uh, how to send the uh, voucher to to the lucky winners? Okay, so okay. Um, 
Hi everybody. Uh, thanks for the comments. Uh, okay, just a quick one. Um, for those of you who might not be familiar with me, uh, maybe I just share with you my IG accounts. Then uh, you can follow my IG account as well. Give me a minute. Yeah. Okay. So these are my. These are my IG accounts. So um, if you guys are interested, you can follow me on my IG. I actually have four IG accounts. Okay, main reason because I shoot different genre of photography. So that's why I have uh, four accounts. And um, mainly I shoot a lot of weddings. A lot of family portraits and i do a lot of wildlife photography and my main account uh, william Trout photography is a mixture of everything so with a lot of travels and a lot of other other kind of uh, genre of photography uh, uh street photos or uh, you know before the login is all the travel photos uh. but uh, now uh, of course i have more singapore photos over there and um wildlife photos um uh, a lot of, of course, uh, besides all the Africa photos and stuff like that, I have a lot of um, local photos as well. Then weddings and family portraits. So if you guys are interested, uh, you can scan the QR code and just follow me on my IG. Okay. Okay. So um, uh, I'm sure everybody who who is here with me, you know, everybody is interested in photography, and um, uh, everybody always want to ask, how do I take nicer pictures? Uh, how do I take um, pictures that's different for everybody? So at least to me, I always feel that in this time, this era now, seriously, um, everybody can take very good photos because the cameras are also good. So actually taking a good photos is no longer that difficult. But in the end, uh, as a photographer, what we also need to do is to um, tap on our creative mind, you know, how to shoot uh, better pictures uh, more creatively. So maybe you can put 10 person in the same scene, but everybody will shoot very differently. So of course, uh, the one with the most creative eye, most uh, creative uh, mind will probably get a photo that's so much more interesting. Yeah, so now, Basically, what I'm going to share with you guys over here is also to share with you guys um, how to tap on your creative mind, how to train yourself to see things differently, how to think differently, um, to try our best to get different photos. So um, I will have a genre of different genre of photos over here from wildlife, travel, uh, street photography, weddings, uh, and stuff like that. Um, is basically to show you guys as long as you have that creative mind and that um, um you know the different eye uh, you can shoot different genre of photography and you can you know still shoot something very differently and what may seem very normal to a lot of people uh, will actually be very different if you pho photograph it you know differently Okay, so feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section. Uh, as I share all the images, right, uh, I'm sure you guys might have a lot of questions for me. So um, feel free to ask me in the comment section. Then uh, definitely I will you know, reply the, uh, the the questions that you guys might have. Okay, give me a minute. Let me just share the images. So thanks again for everybody for joining in on this uh, Saturday evening. And um, yeah, I'm sure um, uh, you guys can probably, you know, do, could have done something more interesting with your time, but uh, uh, definitely, you know, you guys decide to join me to, to listen to my live set, uh, live session, yeah. Okay, so let's see.
Okay, so just to share with you guys some of the images that I have over here. Okay, so I hope uh, you know some of the travel pictures don't make you guys uh, feel too sad because we cannot travel now. Yeah. Okay, hold on now. So, oh, okay, uh, this image was taken in uh, uh, Budapest. Um, I always liked, I mean, a photo always look more interesting when you have got imagery lines over there and um, uh, graphically it looks more interesting. So I was just outside the church over here and um, I see people you know, walking in and out of the church. There I saw this gentleman by the corner here standing over there. I love the light coming in on the right-hand side so you can see the shadow over here as well. So, um, of course, you know, sometimes when we take photos, uh, when we are traveling, we see some interesting subjects. We saw an old man, old gentleman or whatever. We always want to take picture of the person. You know, of course, you know, there's nothing wrong about it. But um, we got to think about it, in what context should we should photograph the person? Um, should it just be a close-up or should we shoot in a way that um, showcase the place, uh, you know, the, a wider angle to show where the place is? And um, I always advise people, like even when I do travel workshops overseas, I bring people overseas, I always tell them, um, and you see something interesting, don't faster go and take a photo and, and, and take a close up or whatever. Just take a step back, um, look at the surroundings and think about how you want to capture the image. So for this image, I saw the old man. Then I saw the going in and out of the, uh, of the, of the church. So I thought, hey, why not? Um, it might be an imaginary line you know, with the person, with the old gentleman here as the pivot over here, and there will be a diagonal line towards the entrance of the church, and um, graphically it looks more interesting as well. So I waited uh, for the people to get in line. Then I got this image. So what I have here is um, something that is more. Uh, as a viewer, you when you look at the picture, you know that the photographer actually put more thought process into that image. And it's not just um, you know, taking an image and that's it. I think even when we judge images and things like that, right, when we judge images and things like that, we always um, uh, got to think about the image, whether it's the photographer just you know, shooting a snapshot or the photographer actually put much, much thought into it to actually capture the image. So this image, uh, basically what I did was really to think about how I want to frame the image and uh, create an imagery line over there to get this image. And uh, okay, sorry, I just saw somebody message in the comments and say that uh, there's an echo in, in my voice. Uh, I hope the rest of you are hearing it okay. Yeah. Okay, anyway, um, yeah, so this is, this is how I look at my images, how I compose images. So to, to every photographer out there, hobbyist or whatever, I always like to tell them to actually think about the image and uh, take a step back, take a breather and take that image instead of just, you know, faster rush in to get the image. Okay. And, uh, Okay, the next image. Oops. Okay, hold on. Huh? Okay, so, um, Let me share the images again. Sorry, there was some mistake. Uh, okay. 
So this is another image. Um, yep, this is another image. Uh, this was taken many years ago. This was actually in <clears throat> this was actually in Tibet, and. Um, Again, I always like to look at shadows and lines and leading lines and stuff like that. So, um, you know, every time I travel, we see something like that. We see a scene like this. We always um, want to take a picture of it. But at the same time, we think about how the light falls on the subjects and um, create the shadows over here. So it actually creates a leading line from the bottom right corner to the image over here. And um, basically, I was also a bit lucky. You know, the dogs are over here uh, looking at the, the 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 cows and everything. So, uh, in case anybody is wondering, this is not a salon shot. So, salon shot meaning that people tend to um, arrange the subjects to get get the image, but all these are not arranged. So, this is shot as it is. And uh, basically, um, I have to look at you know all the lines and how the how to compose the image to get this image. Of course, grid light plays a part as well. So, of course, what you get is very nice light, very nice rim lights on the subjects and very nice shadows over here. Okay. And um, of course, we always talk about framing and things like that. Okay, give me a minute. I'm just reading some of the comments. Okay, good. Uh, most of you are hearing it nicely okay yep so um this was taken in morocco so um i like the shadows again i like the framing and i saw the boys playing soccer over there so what comes to my mind immediately um a lot of us always think about people playing and playing soccer and things like that we want to capture the action and stuff like that yes uh nothing wrong also but what i was thinking is how i frame it I make it look interesting. So I guess all this thought process has always to be there. And um, it's something that we can always train our mind to do it. So that when we see something, naturally our mind will think about how we want to capture the image. Yeah, I always tell my students also, um, sometimes when you're out in, in Singapore, for example, you might not have a camera with you. Uh, when you see nice light, when you see certain action, run through your mind how you want to capture that image if you have a camera with you. So if you do this consistently every day, right, uh, when something happens, when you see a certain scene, uh, hopefully it comes naturally to you. So this is what happens to me when I saw this scene. Uh, I just, it just comes naturally. I saw the lights, I saw the framing, how to shoot them. And, um, of course, I need a bit of luck as well. So hopefully, hopefully, uh, uh, the two boys get into the frame of the light and I can capture that image. So most of the time, uh, I'll say maybe 90% of my time uh, when I'm doing uh, travel photography, I try my best not to um, arrange the subjects or do any um, arrangement for them. So I like to shoot as it is. And uh, this is where it really you know, forces you to think and um, how you want to capture that image. So basically, uh, like I mentioned earlier on when I saw this, this scene, uh, I just pray hard, you know, that the people, the two boys get the frame of the light and the light is within the shadow and within the shadow, there's the two pillars at the, at the side to frame them. So basically, you see different framings in this picture and that is what I want to achieve. And, and this is something that you know, when we see things like that, we should always run through our mind how we want to capture that image. So now I have another image over here. Uh, this was taken in Masai Mara, no, uh, Serengeti. Yeah, this was taken in Serengeti. So um, when we do wildlife photography, we always like action shots and we always like, you know, sometimes we like to take close-up shots. Um, of course, like what I say again, there's nothing wrong, right or wrong about it. But over here, what I envision is uh, I want to create that, 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 
anticipation for the viewer. I want to create that that tension for the viewer. So as a viewer, right, I have not been there before, for example. Uh, I want to see how is it like being in the national park, uh, looking at animals, looking at wildlife, how we go capture the images. So what I have here was, um, uh, it was early in the morning, we saw you know, the, the young lions were actually uh, uh, taking notice of the zebra and trying to you know, get the zebra for breakfast. And uh, of course, we follow it very quietly behind and wait for that moment to capture. But while we are waiting, um, I want to capture them in the same frame. I'll create that tension in the image. So uh, again, we were lucky. The zebra was looking towards us and um, uh, we just waited. So as a lion, two, the pair of lions were slowly approaching it. Uh, um, you capture this in the single frame. It tells a lot of the story. So as a viewer who have not been there before, definitely, uh, well, it plays on my emotions as a viewer. Uh, I'll be very interesting to interested to know what happens after that, etc., etc. So, um, in terms of getting photos, also, it's always good to to create that storyline behind and let viewers also think about it. Uh, think about how what's going to happen in this picture, the the before and the after, and things like that. And you always get people talking about it. So um, for those interested to know, uh, unfortunately for the lions, the zebra managed to run away. La. So the zebra was lucky in this image. Yeah. Okay, so this is another image. Okay, I saw one question from Joseph. For a beginner point of view, how should one train to see the imagery line, the lighting and the framing? Okay. Uh, hi, Joseph. Thanks for the question. So, um, I guess a very easy way is really to, of course, know the rules of photography, uh, basically the rules of third and, and things like that. Yeah. Okay. So, hi, Joseph. So, for, 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 for photographer, I guess, even when we are learning photography, we always need to learn, learn about the rules the rules of third, the leading lines and stuff like that. So once you know about all these rules, right, is um, after that, it's more about application. So in your everyday life, as you go out, uh, when you go out for work or, or you know, uh, go out to meet your friends, um, look around your surroundings. Uh, there are always lines around us in nature, in, uh, uh, you know, man built uh, uh, buildings and stuff like that. There are always lines there. So we always look at them and imagine how we want to frame that image if something happened. You know, uh, if, for example, we just talk about something very common in HDB flats, in our void decks. In our void decks, uh, of course, the void deck with no coffee shop and things like that. Right? So uh, basically what you have there is a lot of lines, you know, all your, all your uh, pillars and things like that. So on a very good light, maybe in the morning light, there'll be light, there'll be sun coming in. You will see shadows, there'll be diagonal lines because of the fact that it's morning light, diagonal lines. Then you think about if I were to put a person there, put a person at the corner, right the lights there or right the shadow there, how will it turn out to be? So every time you, you think about all these things, right? Uh, in the long term, Hopefully, all these things will come naturally. And uh, uh, if you have your camera, or even if you do not have a camera, you know, you have your handphone with you. Nowadays, um, all of us have a handphone camera, most of us. And uh, it helps a lot uh, when we look through our handphone and maybe just frame it in such a way that think about how that image will turn out to be. In fact, I know of some people who, who, who get very nice photos with their handphone cameras as well because... Seriously, a handphone camera, uh, you don't have to worry about all the settings and everything. You know, in a, with, a, with a new real camera, sometimes people have to worry about ISO, um, uh, 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 shutter speed, aperture and stuff like that. But with a handphone camera, basically it's just a framing. So in the long term, 
you roughly get the idea of how you want to achieve the image and uh, all these things will be inbuilt into your mind and after that um, hopefully after a period of time uh, you'll just get better at it i mean i've seen a lot of uh, uh, friends or even uh, some old assistants or uh, things like that um, after some time right they just get so good at it because um, they consistently uh, train their mind to 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 visualize you know uh, the images they can get at certain environment so i hope it answer your question yeah so uh again for lighting sometimes people will ask things like uh, why is considered good light because um, i do a lot of workshops and stuff like that so to us it comes naturally naturally you always say oh when we see good lights uh, this is how we should shoot etc etc so people always ask what is good light? Um, I guess good light happens. How 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 I will actually describe good light is is really about um, how how nice the light actually falls on the person, and uh, how how the shadows it can create from this good light. So uh, it may not be a person, but it can be a sub it can be a, a inanimate things uh, just a subject. Uh, uh, not not a uh, not a person or not an animal, but just how the light falls on the subject, and um, if it turns out nicely, the shadows are nice. That to me is actually good light already. And of course, uh, sometimes we have bad light where where there are no nice shadows, no nice uh, light. But sometimes, um, even though the shadows are minimal, uh, maybe a a very cloudy weather you can still get nice images as well i always believe that um you in our everyday life we there's always a lot of opportunities for us to get our images you no know, weather weather is um, a very bad overcast weather or is it a very good sunny light uh, or even when we shoot family photos in the house if the house is very messy you know, there are always opportunities for us to take nice pictures. Uh, it, all we need is some imagination and how we visualize certain things and we can get images uh, that is good as well. So do not be discouraged when you see very boring, supposedly boring situation. Uh, just try to uh, visualize just try to imagine certain things and you know you can get images out as well okay thank you okay so let me go to the next image yep okay so again this was taken in morocco um i like i like all the all the structures there and things like that. Uh, I love the graffiti, I love mom and whatever. So I love the framing also. But of course, we all know that sometimes for images, we need uh, subjects to be the frame. You know, we have we may have a good framing, but we need subjects in the frame to make it nicer, okay, to make it more interactive. So uh, as a photographer, again, we need a bit of patience. And I waited for a subject so I, I i saw the first cyclist going across from left to right first and i was lucky somebody in the frame actually you know go start cycling in so i captured it in the same frame you know two cyclists on opposite sides and the second cyclist is being framed by this arc over here so um again i quite like it so we we need a bit of patience when we see certain framing certain patterns in our everyday life sometimes you can wait for something to happen then we can take that image so um to reiterate what i mentioned earlier on about uh, maybe this is considered a bad light you know there is no strong lights no strong shadows um i wouldn't consider this a good light but again you see even if we don't have a good light, we can get images as well. 
you know, it's, it can be a very nice, simple graphic image. You know, just a piece of wall, uh, a, a frame over here, two cyclists, and it can be interesting as well. So as I was walking along Morocco, I saw, I saw this, this, um, this, this wall and everything, you know, is, uh, is this place called, this place called Shafshawan in Morocco. So I love the blue walls over there and, um, I love the framing and stuff like that. So of course then I thought, Hey, uh, why not? Maybe there might be people walking past, you know, it can be a nice frame, etc. So I was lucky, uh, two kids come into the frame and they were sharing the apple. So sometimes people might just take an image like this. Okay, let me show you. They might just um, zoom in, you know, zoom in like this. Then, you know, well, it, it's nice, but again, it's not creative, creative enough. So remember I say earlier on about taking a step back and think about how you frame images. So instead of taking a, a zoom up, zooming image like this, you know, I, I, I actually shoot wider so I can see the frame, the framing, and um, I can also see, you know, the surroundings, how is it like? And uh, if I don't know about that place, I will ask, you know, as a viewer, I'll think, hey, why is this place looks interesting, etc., etc. So this is how we, we create, um, we can shoot images in a more creative way. It's not just always about just close-ups and stuff like that. So sometimes uh, people might ask, you know, where, oh, I like to do travel photography. Uh, maybe I want to get a 50, 140 mm uh, uh, or 70, 200 equivalent lens, you know, for, for, for travel photography. Um, I always tell them, unless you are shooting a lot of portraits, maybe you can try to shoot, bring a wider lens uh, to, to, for your photo session because uh, it might be a bit more interesting in, you know, zooming in and uh, getting all the images. Yeah. So um, just share another image with you guys. Okay. This was actually taken in Finland. Yep. So I was taken, taken in Finland and uh, uh, I was actually on the sledge. The Huskies were pulling me along for the sledge. So I, I, I love the, the landscapes in, in Finland and I love the, the trees and stuff like that. So I thought, hey, you know, uh, from a first person perspective from the sledge, how is the image going to look like? So I used a wide angle as I was, you know, running through the uh, uh, forest in the sledge. I, I took a wide angle shoot bottom up and get this image. And of course, you we were very lucky, uh, very nice um, sunset as well. Very nice sunset as well. And uh, um, I like this point of view, you know, sometimes we want to show people uh, as a photographer, or even as a traveler, uh, what I can see, you know, from my point of view. Um, so, so as I was right, right, going through the sledge, I decided to take this image and, and to me, it, it draws me into the image, uh, like how it feels like if I'm, you know, going through the forest in the sledge, uh, in, in the winter, you know, so, so always think about the different perspective, um, instead of shooting images that is straight on, uh, or, or looking straight at, at, at the scene and things like that. We can shoot from a lower angle, from a higher angle and things like that. So this one is really from a very low angle and really to put people in that perspective to, to get this image. Okay, so another image I have here is, uh, this was taken in India. Um, no, Sri Lanka, sorry. Yeah, so um, I really love um, the old lady as well, you know, the image, the, 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 the expressions and stuff like that. But of course, a lot of times people like to shoot again close ups. They might shoot something like that, you know, uh, close ups. But I want to show more, more context in the image. Instead of going through all the uh, close ups, I shoot a bit wider. I shoot a bit wider and um, 
I frame it with a person walking away over here. So it basically stirs on your emotions. Um, I don't know about maybe the viewers out there, but at least to me, right, when I look at this image, if I zoom in this image where I shoot something like that, I might not feel as emotional do, uh, about this image as compared to this image because it, it makes me feel that, you know, um, uh, she's in the train going away and somebody is walking away. You know, there's a contrast in the image that stirs on my emotions a lot more. So um, how, how you want to frame it you know, nicely and more creatively is really to, to think about the storyline, to, to think about how you want to stir on your viewers' emotions. Yeah, a, a photo can be very nice, okay? I, I, I think now when we look at Instagram, we look at Facebook, we look at social media, there are a lot of very nice images. But what is very important to me is um, uh, I like to stir on the emotions as well. Besides all the storytelling and things like that, stir on the emotions. And, and for a photographer, we really have to think about how, how we want to do it. Yeah. So again, like what I mentioned earlier on, it's really to, to take a step back and, and look at the bigger picture. It's always, I mean, even I fall prey to such things. If I go to the place the first time, or even in Singapore, when I see something very interesting, the first instant, the first instinct that I have is to shoot close up picture and uh, uh, faster capture that moment, that emotion and things like that. Uh, but yes, yeah, sometimes I will faster, I will take that image. But after that, I will think about it, think about how I want to create something different. Uh, as long as the moment is still there, um, I will take a step back and, and really to look at the overall picture and how I want to create that image to make it look a bit different. Okay. So this next image as well. Um, okay. This image was in uh, Tokyo. Uh, um, yeah, Tokyo, Japan. So. A lot of people will have um, uh, taken this picture over here before. And it's always very interesting. But to me, instead of taking the picture in a way that everybody shot, I decided not to go out there to shoot. I was actually shooting from a sheltered overhead bridge, I think. I cannot remember, actually. Yeah. And... Um, I want to give a different layers in the images, in, in the image. So you think about all the place, places that you have been to before. Um, you have probably seen a lot of the images on Google. For example, you just type Google, you see all the images there. Uh, it's very important for us to, to take it upon ourselves to shoot in a way that is a bit different. So I decided not to go out there to shoot. As I mentioned earlier on, I was shooting in a sheltered area uh, uh, at the overhead bridge. So I create a different layer in the image. So if you were to see at the right hand, uh, right hand side over here, this is a reflection. I was shooting through the glass actually. So uh, this is a reflection of people walking behind me. So you can see a lady walking over here. So you can see the crossing over here. And you can see um, um, a bit of the uh, fence over here. So as a viewer, we, the person will probably want to, to look into the image a bit more. You know, as a viewer, I want to see, hey, how did the photographer get, get this image? Hey, um, I've been there so many times. I've not, you know, I, I, I've not really seen something like that before. So it, it creates that, that, that thought, that thinking process in your viewers. So, Really, as a photographer, you really have to, to think out of the box. Um, uh, walk away from, from the scene itself and think about how you might want to capture that image differently. Um, and we've probably seen a lot of images like I mentioned on Google before. But when you are there, uh, maybe try to forget all those things that you have seen and try to take the image differently that is you know, basically your own. 
and uh, uh, create images that that is really uh, uh, that they really belong to to you and not to anyone else. Yeah. So uh, next image here, this was actually taken in uh, Mongolia. Um, I was I was it was early in the morning. I woke up, uh, get out from the gear from the gear tent. Then I think about how I want to capture the images over here. Um, from a distance, I saw a horseman over there. So again, I have to mention all these are not arranged. So I thought it looks quite interesting. And I want to show the uh, the the really the, the sense of space, the sense of place over there, uh, uh, how big that whole area is. So it's good that the horseman is far away uh, uh, and the gear tent over here that is very near me. So I will capture that in the same frame to really create that sense of space uh, over there. And uh, uh, to, to a lot of people, they might just take an image like this again. Yeah, so, oops, sorry. They might just zoom in and take an image like this. Yes, um, oh, it could be quite interesting also, but sometimes we want to show the context more. So I, if you take an image like this, this could be anywhere, okay? But if you take an image like this, you roughly know that either this is somewhere in um, Central Asia or Mongolia. So uh, in this context, you know, it tells, tells the viewer more about the image. And it's not just another close-up image. Yep. So um, another image that I have here. Yep. And... Uh, uh, I really love the light. Uh, this was in India. Yeah, I really love the light over here, and I thought it, it, the light and shadow is 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 beautiful. So, um, people, you know, people might take get get an image like this. You know, the peak of action, everybody playing cards and things like that. But remember what I mentioned earlier on: take a step back and um, uh, create a story a story so this is what i did i saw the other man on the right over here so i thought hey you know he's looking over there and the light was great as well so i decided to take this image instead and uh what i have here is a story to let people think more about the image also okay so okay just to have a short break here okay um so now it's a now is the time for the keyword for the uh, $100 voucher. Okay, okay. so the keyword, uh, do hashtag in the comment section. Uh, Fujifilm will pick it up. So the keyword here for the voucher is hashtag Fujifilm GFX100S. Okay, so I repeat, hashtag Fujifilm GFX100S. So put this um, keyword in the comment section and uh, Fujifilm will pick it up. At the end of this session, they will pick up the winner, the three winners for the um, $100 voucher. And I just need you guys to stay with me until the end of the session and acknowledge it, acknowledge it um, on the comment section and Fujifilm will contact you to mail you the vouchers, okay? Let me repeat one more time. Uh, hashtag Fujifilm GFX100S. Okay. Okay. Very good. I can see all the comments coming in. Okay. Let me carry on with the photos. Okay. Uh, yeah, this was also in Mongolia. As I mentioned earlier on, uh, you know, go, we, we, as a photographer to, to create different images, sometimes, uh, we have to squat down, lie down, prone down and things like that. So I, I love this image of the, um, of the horseman, they are changing the horse shoe for the horse. So, well, if you use a 50mm lens to shoot, um, you were to, okay, hold on, uh, am I not seeing the image? Oops, okay. Yeah, this is an image, sorry. Yeah, so if you were to 
shoot with a 50mm lens uh, straight on, sometimes it does not look as interesting. You know, so what I did was to go wide angle, go wide angle, go close, go low, and get this image. So, you know, the, the horse is all exaggerated. So the lines, you can see actually there's a leading line here also from this corner, you know, from this corner, it actually, you know, there are two lines coming coming in. So it exaggerates the whole scene. And uh, it, it, a wide angle has that, that power to pull the viewer into that scene. So over here, you know, instead of using a you know, standard 50mm lens, for example, you can use a, a, a wide angle lens to go close. Uh, don't be shy. A lot of times, uh, a lot of my you know, students, they always say, oh, you know, I feel a bit shy. You know, I, I don't dare to go close. But um, when you go close, sometimes the images uh, uh, are so much better. Yeah, um, think about some war images that you saw before uh, on magazines or wherever. You know, the, the nicest images are probably those that are white, you know, short, short white and not using a 70 You know, everything okay, everything is nice, correct, but somehow it doesn't pull you close to the subjects. So with a white angle, right, it has that power to do it. So this is very important. Yeah. Okay, uh, thanks. I saw some of the, some of the uh, messages coming in from Mervin. Yeah, got to break the habit of close-up. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so close-ups is always the easiest way to do it. You know, frankly, if you got, uh, if you're talking about Fuji film lenses, uh, 56 1.2, you know, or now we have a 50mm 1.0. Shooting close up is very easy. Uh, everything okay, and you take a close up, and that's nice, fantastic. But always think about it. Uh, uh, think about what is beyond nice. Yes, you get very nice image, but beyond that, you know, you get very nice bouquet and everything. But what's the story behind it? And always question yourself. What is beyond nice? This is a nice image, but how I want to make it better? I want to make it more creative. Yeah, that is the question we always got to ask ourselves. So, um, okay, Joseph was asking me, um, do you set the grid lines to guide the framing? Uh, well, I do not really set the grid lines. Uh, but of course, for somebody who is new, um, setting a grid lines might be good for training. But I guess for a lot of professionals, I mean, we have been shooting for so many years, um, is to a certain extent is imprinted in our vision when we look at images. So, um, uh, yeah, I basically do not set any grid lines uh, uh, for that. Lah. But if you are training, if you are still learning, it's always good. It can be quite a, it can be quite quite a good way to train yourself. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Okay, I just look at some of my images. Okay, this is another image. This was taken in um, Sri Lanka. Yeah. Um, always think about light and shadows as well. How we want to create images differently. So sometimes I like to create two images in one single image image so um what i have here is i like initially when i look at this this place where i was at the scene i love the light and the shadow coming in by the side over here then i thought oh these two gentlemen here is interesting well you know um but um about it lah, that's about it yeah they are just standing there in the light and the shadow here then i thought oh it would be perfect if uh, somebody else walked past from this side and she'll be he or she'll be in the light and that would be perfect you know um makes me want to you know read into the image a bit more so i waited a while um very short while actually this is actually at the bus terminal so a lot of people are walking around so i i was lucky this lady walked past grabbed that shot so i got this you know like this this image uh you know two two different two two images in one one competition so it looks a bit more interesting instead of just you know taking a picture of say 
yeah, just like that. Yeah, so this, yeah, this might not be that interesting, but this will make it a lot more interesting. So we, we got to think about how we frame people in. And uh, as a photographer, I think I get more excited when I see a lot of people at a place. Yeah, like some people will say, oh, yeah, you know how to shoot. There are so many people, you know. Um, I'd rather shoot at a place where there's less people. But no, to me, I always like it a lot more when there are a lot more people. So I got more subjects to play with. Uh, and, and, and people are always, you know, moving around. And uh, you always look more interesting. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, don't be afraid of, of, of crowds. Yeah. Think about crowds actually make the place look more interesting okay and um just another image about storytelling okay so this was actually taken in uh africa kenya again um the uh jacker was feeding on the uh i think it was a little beast yeah and uh uh a lot of people might just take an image like this, close up again. Oops, sorry. Yeah, close up again. Um, yeah, nice, quite good shot. But then again, remember about the storytelling aspect. So I shoot a bit wider. Uh, just nice, the voucher is there. So in the story context, you know, it tells a lot more of the image. Um, you know, the jackal was feeding the voucher was waiting by the side and you know there was an intense you know stare from the jackal looking at at the voucher so perfect i mean i i, I love things like this that actually creates that intensity in the image yeah okay keep the uh, comments coming in i can still see some people posting on the hashtag remember if you want to win the uh hundred dollar voucher uh do hashtag in the comment section uh fujifilm gfx 100s yeah then uh fujifilm will select the winner from there okay yep so um another image i have here this was actually in turkey so um i was actually on the boat where i shot this image I saw this um, light, beautiful light. Of course, people call it the Jesus light coming in. So I love it so much. So I want to take an image. Then I think about it. Uh, if I take an image like this, well, nice, but could have been better. So I shot a bit wider. Shot a bit wider and I shot like this with the bridge on top frame in this way that um, you know, create more context in the image. Yeah. So again, reiterate what I mentioned about uh, stepping back and, and not doing all the close-ups because we all want to show a bit more, you know, in the storyline, in the images. Okay. So uh, think about how you want to create the images differently and that's very important. Another image I'd like to share over here is um, this was taken in uh, Madagascar. I love this image. Okay. Uh, this was not post. Uh, everything was shot as it is. And I, I love the different layers over here. Um, okay. Just to share with you my thoughts when I saw this place. I saw this place. I see the colors. I love the colors. You know, white door, red background. I love red. Uh, a lot of people might know um, light was you know, perfect because uh, perfect in a way that you can create silhouettes if people just walk past me. So uh, people were walking past me and I was, I was shooting. I saw, oh, nice. Um, I can see silhouettes. But, you know, taking silhouette shot is so cliche, right? Everybody can get silhouette shot. Like, you know, people can get silhouette shots like this. And uh, yeah, yeah, we see silhouette shots all the time. So remember I said earlier on about how you want to create images that is different. Uh, uh, take it upon yourself to create. I use the word create and not just taking images. Create images that is different. So I thought, okay, 
when I wait a while longer, I see what I can get. So I was lucky again, people walk past. So I get two silhouettes over here and uh, uh, one person was walking there and you get that frame, the person framed by the two silhouettes. So to me, you know, it's the perfect timing. And uh, yeah, we just need a bit of time. So, so just think about how you might get an image differently. Always, it's always about how you think about that image that is very important. Yeah. So uh, don't just be satisfied with just a normal silhouette shots like, like this, for example, like mentioned just now. Uh, think about how else can it be different Okay, but of course, um, to to be able to get this image, firstly, you also have to know your technicalities, like uh, exposure, for example. Uh, uh, you know how you go capture how how you go expose for your image to ensure they capture a silhouette shot instead of a well exposed shots. So of course, all your skill sets have to be there. You know how whether you got adjust your aperture, your shutter speed, your ISO, etc., etc. You know your your basic skill set have to be there. Then after that, you know think about how you can shoot creatively. Yeah. So so um, perfect. I, I I personally I love this image a lot. You know it's something different, and it's not just uh, normal silhouette shots. Yeah. Then uh, okay, I probably have about ten more minutes. Uh, so do keep the comments coming in. If you've got questions, uh, keep them coming in as well. Otherwise, remember to hashtag Fujifilm GFX100S to get your $100 voucher. Okay, there will be three lucky winners. So um, yeah, do keep them coming in. And um, okay, just to share with you one image over here that I love as well. This was taken in Bosnia. Okay. Um, for the past 45 minutes or so, I've always been talking about taking a step back and uh, looking at it at a bigger context, a wider context. So this is another image. Um, uh, well, I love the lady, you know, by the by the bus stop, you know, uh, sitting there. Uh, some of us always make this mistake. I myself make this mistake also. I'll just take an image like this. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay. But maybe to show where that place might be, show a bigger context, frame it in a different angle. So I have a frame by the um, bus stop over here. I like that road over here, you know, very old buildings over there. You know, at least people would think about, oh, okay, wow, well, you know, is this one image or two images? And, you know, it's, it looks interesting. And, and I mean, if you can understand foreign language, you probably would know where is this place, you know. Um, uh, again, you know, really it's about how how I might want to create images that that is a bit different, um, yeah, in a different context. Yep. And uh, one more image over here. Oops. Oops. Okay, give me a minute. Yeah. Okay. Okay, just give me one second. Okay. So these are some other images that I want to share. These are some wedding pictures. So um for a lot of aspiring wedding photographers out there, uh, these are some things that you can think about as well. Um, remember earlier part of the uh, session, I say, uh, as long as your thought process is there, right, you can be shooting any any genre of photography is still very much uh, applicable. You know, earlier on, you can see all the travel pictures, street photos, uh, uh, wildlife photography and things like that. Um, all these ideas that I have applies to wedding photos as well. 
So um, this was uh, some wedding photos that I shot recently. And um, uh, was at the stairs. So again, different perspective. You, know, you can always shoot from bottom up, bottom up or top down to, to create different images. And, and because in our daily life, to most of the people, they don't look at it this way. When you capture an image like this differently, that's where you know um, um, it creates that 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 very interesting image for for your clients or for yourself as well. Okay, so um, this was in the house. Uh, if you guys notice, this was this is actually on the left hand side. This is actually the TV. So um, yeah, you know. Shooting in the house can be very interesting as well. Um, uh, with the TV, you know, nowadays, every, most people have very huge TV. It's not like the olden days, you know, where it's what, 21 inch or whatever. Now a lot of people have 40 inch TV or bigger. So it can be a very big mirror, big reflection as well. And um, it makes it very interesting uh, for you to create the images. So always think about reflections think about uh, constraint areas how you go shoot differently uh, how you go have a different angle bottom up or top down and things like that yeah and um look at your surroundings basically yeah okay just another image um okay this image um uh, i love this image also also because uh, uh this was actually in the evening already so um uh it was a, uh, I did not have my assistant with me and things like that. So I don't have uh, extra, a pair of extra hands for lights. But if you notice the groom over here, you know, he's rimmed by a light. Yeah. So some people might ask, hey, where did the light come from? You know, so lights actually come from the um, uh, 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 Palama house behind. So I just show the image. Go on, uh. Yeah, so from this other image, it's actually there's a spotlight at the back. Okay, so um, there's a spotlight at the back. So actually, I made use of the spotlight to create that rim of the cup of the groom in the next image yeah hold on yep so that's why i always tell people look at your surroundings every time when you are at a location right look at the surroundings um there will always be chances that there will always be opportunities that you can capture images using whatever is available okay somebody was asking Mervyn was asking do you scout the venue prior to doing your wedding shots uh no i do not actually um, uh, okay, of course, pre-COVID days, I travel a lot for overseas wedding shoots as well. So sometimes couples might ask me also, um, oh, you have not been to this city, you know, how, how can you shoot? But basically, as a photographer, you know, my, my ideology, my, my way of thinking, uh, how I frame, how I look at lights, how I look at shadows, how I frame, you know, images, uh, the concept is always there. So it could be a very new place to me, but it doesn't matter. You know, uh, as long as you have all these things in your mind, right? Um, it doesn't really matter where you are, uh, never have been there, haven't been there before. You know, it doesn't really matter anymore because your creative mind is always there and you can shoot, uh, you know, you can create images um, even though, you know, it's a different genre altogether, even though uh, we have never been there before. So um, that is very important. That's why I always tell people, tell my students also, um, you have to constantly um, uh, uh, be active in your mind, you know, visualize, imagine how images, how different images will look differently, you know, in, in, in different place. In your everyday life, every time when we go out, uh, look around your surroundings, you know, we cannot travel now, so it doesn't matter. But uh, Singapore do have a lot of nice uh, uh, nice corners as well uh, for, for photography. If you see some of the, um, if you guys are club ads, um, uh, recently I've been posting a lot of uh, Singapore photos as well. 
uh, they're always very nice, interesting angles as well. So don't be restricted. You know, the only thing that is, um, don't be restricted by, by, by your surroundings. As long as, you know, you're, you, you have a creative mind, right? Um, uh, anything can, any place, you know, can create great images as well. Okay. So, um, I probably have another five more minutes. So, um, so the last five minutes, remember if you want to win the hundred dollar Fujifilm voucher, um, remember the hashtag Fujifilm GFX hundred S. Okay. And, um, okay. Let me go to the next image. Yep. Okay, this was, um, I, I love this image. This was just taken last week over, uh, uh, no, not last week, just before phase two for the wedding. Yeah, uh, I was at a church. Um, yeah, the church was at the background. So I was scouting around the area and I thought, hey, um, quite nice. And I like, I like the clouds as well, you know. So I got a couple outside, just get a wet angle shot and uh, got this image. So, um, uh, again, you know, sometimes we always think about how, how boring Singapore can be, you know, we cannot get interesting shots, but, uh, at the same time, um, you put yourself, um, in the shoes of a foreigner. If a foreigner will come to Singapore, they would think that Singapore is probably quite interesting as well. I guess we always get used to what we see. And after a while, we, we actually think that, oh, it's no longer interesting. But you look at it from a fresh, fresh, fresh pair of eyes, you know, um, uh, and something fresh in your mind as well. And you probably can get some interesting image as well. Um, like I always tell people, we, um, as for a lot of Singapore photographers, we've probably been to Botanic Gardens a lot of times, whether we are shooting family photos, shooting bridal photos, um, we always get images from there, but I always go there with a fresh um, mind as well. I do not go there with a pre preconceived idea of how am I going to shoot because everything can be different. The lighting can be different. Um, the weather can be different. So I go there with a fresh mind and uh, uh, force myself to think creatively again uh, for a place that I've been there so many times to perhaps think about how, how to shoot, how to deliver, you know, how to create a different set of image. Yeah, because remember, it's always not about um, same settings. The only thing that changed is the couple. No, I don't think that should be the way. So every time when you bring a, 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 a new couple, a new family there, you know, it's, it always should be something different. The well, dynamics are very different. So you can always create different images, but bear in mind um, how to shoot creatively is really take a step back. Uh, uh, how you want to create an image and uh, look at it from a fresh pair of eyes and you know, go, don't be restricted to, to the environment. Yeah. So what I have here, Joseph is asking me, um, most creative portrait that I have done. Wow, that's a tough question. Um, I, I, I guess in all my years, 10 over years as a professional photographer, I've shot a lot of very nice portraits that I really liked a lot. Um, I probably don't have really, you know, the, 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 I don't think, maybe the most creative portrait that I have is the next one that I will create. Yeah, because um, whatever I've created, maybe after I look at it the second time, might no longer be creative anymore. So um, look forward to your next image. Look forward to your next creative image that you are going to create. And that to me is probably the best one. Yeah, the most creative one. Yep. Okay. Um, I probably come to the end of the session. Uh, yep. So stay online for a while longer. Fujifilm will put in the comment section the three winners for the hundred dollar voucher. So um, yeah, or if you got any more questions, feel free to ask me also. 
yeah in the meantime uh i got to yeah okay so now we have uh fujifilm has actually posted the three winners nicole Alan and Colin. So what I need you guys to do is just to acknowledge on the comment section. Yeah. So um, do respond within the last, the next 30 seconds. So once you guys have acknowledged it, uh, then Fujifilm will contact you guys separately to mail the vouchers to you. Okay. Okay, thanks Colin. Nicole and Alan you guys to respond and acknowledge okay but uh thank you very much everybody for 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 joining me on this session uh of course now it's phase two we will likely have more uh you know webinar again uh to share with you guys on you know different things uh photography equipment and things like that do let us know also um what you like to have uh, do let us know also what you like to hear from us. You know, Fuji Film Singapore is always listening to you guys as well. Um, let us know what topics you like to you know hear from us from the ex photographers. Uh, I'm sure you know we we do have a lot of things to share with you guys also. Okay. Um, yep. So thank you very much, and uh, uh, thank you Fuji Film Singapore also for having this session, and. Uh, Till next time, I'll catch you guys again. And uh, yep, I think everybody has responded. Yep. Okay, th congrats to the three winners, Colin, Allen, and Nico. I'll see you next time again. Thank you very much. See you. Bye-bye.